Allah, our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to Him. He wanted humans to be the best and give His best religion to them. Allah, our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to Him. He wanted humans to be the best and give His best religion to them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praise is due to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leads us say, none can show Him guidance. May the greatest peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. My dear viewers, today's episode is number 63 in the new series of Al-Adab Al-Mufrad or the Prophetic Etiquettes and Manners, the beautiful compilation of a hadith by Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail Al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him. And today we'll continue with the chapter of the servant being sincere to his master, being dutiful to his employer. The first hadith we have on Salih ibn Hay, that is hadith number 203 by the way. On Salih ibn Hay, قال, قال رجل لعامر الشعبي يا أبا عمر إنا نتحدث عندنا أن الرجل إذا أعتق أم ولده ثم تزوجها كان كالراكب بدنته فقال عامر حدثني أبو بردة عن أبيه قال قال لهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة لهم أجران رجل من أهل الكتاب آمن بنبيه وآمن بمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فله أجران والعبد المملوك إذا أدى حق الله وحق مواليه ورجل كانت عنده أمة يطأها فأدبه يطأها فأدبها فأحسن تأديبها وعلمها فأحسن تعليمها ثم أعتقها فتزوجها فله أجران قال عامر أعطيناكها بغير شيء وقد كان يركب فيما دونها إلى المدينة. So Salih ibn Hay is one of التابعين. He narrated that a man said to Amr al-Shabi, and who's Amr al-Shabi? We'll talk about him shortly. And he's also one of the great tabi'een and the great fuqaha. He said to Amr al-Shabi. Ya Aba Amr, we say that whenever a man frees his slave woman who happened to give birth to his child, that is known as Ummul Walad, and then he happens to marry her, he is like the one who rides his own camel. So Amr said, well Abu Burda narrated to me that from his father, that the messenger of Allah peace be upon him and uh, the prophet peace be upon him said to him three will have double reward the first is a person from among the people of the book who believed in his prophet then he believed in Muhammad peace be upon him such person shall receive double reward and when a servant carries out the due of Allah and the due of his master, he has also a double reward. And now we cover two. And the third is a man who happened to have a slave girl with whom he used to have an intimate relationship. Then he taught her and instructed her and disciplined her very well. And then he freed her, and he also married her. Then he will have 
two or words. So Amr said to the questioner, well, I have informed you this for free. While the people used to travel to Medina to acquire lesser information. What do we have here? Some of the phrases uh, requires deep explanation. First of all, who is Amir al-Shaabi? Amir al-Shaabi is also known as the great faqih of Iraq, born in Kufa, same year like al-Hasan al-Basri, the master and the chieftain of al-Tabi'een, yani the second generation after the companions. Those who were lucky enough to see the companions, but they were not fortunate enough to meet with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So they are called Tabi'een. And those who come after them, the third generation, who happen to meet the second generation, but not the first generation, and obviously they were not fortunate enough to meet with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu while Muslims. Accordingly, those three generations who have been admired by the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, when he said, Khairun Nasi Qarni, the best of mankind, the best of all people, are my generation, my companions. Thumma alladheena yalunahum, then those who come after them, at tabi'een Thumma alladheena yalunahum, then those who come after them, tabi'i at tabi'een the followers of the followers of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Three generations, then the trials and the tribulations will boom. So al shabi or Amir al shabi who is one of at tabi'een he lived for 87 years. He died on the year uh, 105, 106, around this time after the migration of the Prophet sallallahu so he was born in Kufa in Iraq and he also migrated to Medina for a while but he also returned back to his home land Kufa in Iraq and he lived there and he died there. He was a great mufti and a great alim and a great scholar. Somebody had a conversation with him concerning if you remember in the previous episodes we have been talking about the merits and the magnificent were for the kind treatment of the maids, and the servants, and the slaves whenever there were slavery. So now, the compiler of the collection, Imam Bukhari, listed a chapter. What about the servants being dutiful to their masters, to their employers, being sincere in serving them? So they have to serve Allah and fulfill their duties towards Allah. And also they have to be sincere in serving their employers as well. You know, I don't have to keep a surveillance camera on top of you to know what you're doing and to, to observe you 24-7. You are in a charge. You should be sincere. You should fulfill your duty. So among the ahadith, some ahadith talking about the merits and the reward for a person who happened to have a slave woman, then he frees her. After he educates her, not only he frees her, he sets her free, but he marries her. And that was something like a shameful thing for the Arab back then. How could you marry your slave girl? Well, she's already yours, a concubine. But Islam came to encourage freeing the slaves and furthermore treating them like your own self, like your own family members. And since this woman whom you know that she's chast and she's been serving you if you educate her if you take care of her you feed her then you marry her you receive double reward not only one reward so the person who was speaking to Amr al-Shabi the great Imam and Faqih of Iraq he said we used to consider this a shameful thing how could a person marry his own camel because they treated the slaves back then like an object, like a ride. You know, sometimes a camel will be more expensive than a servant. So he said, let me tell you what I heard from Abu Burda, who is a companion. He said that he heard from his father that the Prophet Sallallahu informed them there are three categories of people whom Allah will reward them twice. For reward and twice, one of them 
is a person who was Jewish or Christian and then he heard about the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So after he believed in Moses and he believed in Jesus, he came to know about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He read the Quran and he said the shahada like whom? Like many of the Jewish rabbis, Abdullah ibn Salam for instance. Okay, he was not just a Jewish person. He was a very learned person. Like whom Waraka ibn Nawfal, because Waraka ibn Nawfal was pagan. Then he studied Christianity and he became Christian and he became very well versed in Christianity. Then once Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, shared with him about the angel who came to him and he immediately showed interest and he said, I wish I would survive to support you when the Meccans will expel you and force you out of Mecca. So the Prophet ﷺ said, هم, Will they kick me out of Mecca and why? They already love me, they revere me. So when I come to them with a message from God, they're supposed to love me more. He said, no, 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 no. Every Prophet before you and every messenger have been treated the same. People do not like the Prophets because they ask them to do what Allah wants them to do. So, that means Waraqa ibn Nawfal believed in Jesus, peace be upon him, out of conviction. And once he heard about Muhammad sallallahu he was the first to declare that I will follow you, I will support you, even physically. He died obviously before the Prophet sallallahu went public, but the Prophet sallallahu saw him in a night vision, in a very good condition and wearing green as a sign of being saved by the Almighty Allah. So those, even today, today, when we travel in North America, in Latin America, all over Europe, and uh, Eastern Europe, Latvia, Rida, and Scandinavian countries, there are a lot of people who claim to be Christians. They follow their own traditions. Even though they don't know much about Christianity, but they say, we believe in Jesus. No one will give them da'wah, and they come to know about Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he's the final messenger, and they say that, Kalima and the Shahada, they will receive the reward twice, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. Moving to the next example, the second category, and a servant during slavery. During slavery. Can we apply this to also today when somebody is being employed and being in a charge? Like somebody is in a charge of house engineer, managing the house affairs, maid. Um, babysitter, somebody was in a charge. So they look after the wealth of their employers, the house, the food, the uh, education of the children. They keep everything neat for the sake of Allah. They're sincere. MashaAllah. Meanwhile, they don't miss a prayer. They are honest. And whenever it is Ramadan, they're fasting like everyone else. So they fulfill their duties towards Allah and they fulfill their duties towards their employers. Allah will give them the reward twice. Having said so, many people ask me, I work as an acquisition manager in such and such company, or even a restaurant. And then I'm in charge of buying the raw materials. I'm in charge of buying whatever we need for the factory or for the company. So the suppliers, they give me gifts. And they say, this has nothing to do with work. We give it to you because you are so nice. We love you for the sake of Allah. Is this gift halal or haram? So when I say it is 100% haram, they argue. And they said, but Sheikh, they give it to me because I'm nice to them. So when I asked, what if you retire today or you're fired? You don't work for this company anymore. Your employer said, Thank you for your services out of my job, out of my office. Will the supplier or the suppliers continue to give you monthly gifts? The answer is definitely not. So you already know they're giving you this because you're giving them business. Because there are many suppliers and you preferred and you chose a particular supplier over others. And as long as there are gifts, they control my heart. 
they control my emotions. I feel like those guys are super nice, but maybe they're good. You're going to just fight that says, look, Sheikh, they give us the best goods and they're the best people when it comes to treatment and delivering on time and so on. But maybe the others are better, but you block them. Why? Because those guys are giving you gifts. So here, when the Prophet Sallallahu said, a person who fulfilled the duties, his duties towards his employer or his master or whatever, and towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala received the reward, he better understand about the huquq. And we will study shortly a hadith about kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun arrayyati. Every one of you is a guardian and every one of you will be held accountable and asked about those who are under his guardianship. Right? Now, the third category, this is the catch. This is why we're studying this hadith and that is why Imam Bukhari listed this hadith in the chapter. He said, and a man who used to have a slave woman, they call her concubine. Nowadays, we don't have this anymore. And Muslims were the first to practice that. So whenever it was practiced, and he had the right to have an intimate relationship with her. In Islam, if she conceives, number one, if the master back then happened to sleep with his servant, with his slave woman, and she happened to uh, give birth, she's become free, even if he doesn't free her. Number two, even if she doesn't give birth, no one else can have an intimate relationship with her. Why not? Because she has been like a married woman to this guy. So he cannot lend her to somebody else? No. Uh, he cannot say, okay, go ahead. You're already having an intimate relationship with her. No one else can. So when she gives birth, automatically she's free. And that is called Ummul Walad. He cannot sell her, even if he wants to. So Ummul Walad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a man who used to have a girl, a servant, and then Adabaha, he educated her properly, Allamaha, he taught her properly, Fa Then he set her free for the sake of Allah without any compensation, without any money. Then he proposed to her and he married her as a free woman, not as a slave. Falahu Ajran. He shall receive his reward twice. Now Amr said to the man, look, this hadith, people used to travel to Medina and they spend arm and leg and it would cost them a lot in order to learn it and get it. And it would take them a month traveling and a month returning. They were giving it to you for free. Even lesser information, people used to exert a lot of effort, time and money to learn. And here I'm giving you this hadith for free. Those ulama, brothers and sisters, may Allah reward them, whether the companions or at tabi'een or their followers, whom we call uh, the salaf salih our righteous predecessors. They have made it easy for us to learn about everything about Prophet Muhammad and all his traditions. May Allah be pleased with them. So we have learned, and I wish, I wish I can treat the audience like my uh, students at the university, where I can ask questions and you send them. Can you type the three categories whom the Prophet wasallam said, they shall receive the reward twice, double reward, a reward for being good at the first time and a reward for being good in the second time. So if you remember them, you can type them and go ahead and do so on my Facebook page, please. I'll be more than happy to check out your answers and respond to you. Let's take another hadith quickly before the break. The following hadith is narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, hadith number 204. An Abi Musa qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, المملوك الذي يحسن عبادة ربه ويؤدي إلى سيده الذي فرض الطاعة والنصيحة له أجران. Okay, that sounds like in the same line of the previous couple of hadith. Yes, indeed. 
Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the slave who fulfills his duties towards Allah, when it comes to worship, okay, he fulfills all his duties of worship towards Allah. And also, he fulfills his duties towards his master of being obedient and of being honest, of being sincere in looking after his property and after his job and doing his job as it should be, Allah the Almighty will reward him twice. Because even though he's being owned or being employed and he has a full-time job, he doesn't miss his duties towards Allah. He doesn't miss a prayer and wait until its time is out. Rather, he fulfills his duties on both uh, levels. Alhamdulillah. The following hadith, hadith number 205. And now it is narrated by Abu Burda radiallahu an. His son, Ibn Abi Burda, in hadith number 205, said, قال سمعت أبا بردة يحدث عن أبيه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المملوك له أجران إذا أدى حق الله في عبادته أو قال في حسن عبادته وحق مليكه الذي يملكه سو أبو بردة his son narrated from him, he said, I heard from my father that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the servant who fulfills his duties towards Allah or husni ibadatih, yani he fulfills his ibadah and worship towards Allah perfectly, properly, in the best possible way, وَحَقَّ مَلِيكِهِ And he fulfills his duties towards his master and he gives him all his rights shall receive double reward. And the new chapter is باب العبد راعن The servant is a guardian. What do you mean the servant is a guardian? I thought the servant is a servant. And the servant has a guardian. Well, let's not rush. Why don't we study the hadith together? We have a few minutes before the break. We can quote this beautiful hadith, hadith number 206. It is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal. Kullukum ra'in. وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته فالأمير الذي على الناس راع وهو مسؤول عن رعيته والرجل راع على أهل بيته وهو مسؤول عن رعيته وعبد الرجل راع على مال سيده وهو مسؤول عنه ألا كلكم راع وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. And his father narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Every one of you is a guardian. And accordingly, every guardian is responsible for his charges and will be questioned a recount by Allah about those who are under his guardianship. Mas'oolun arra'iyyati. And then he gave some examples. The first is the ruler who has authority over people. He's a guardian and is responsible for them. And a man is a guardian of his family. Me and you and every family father. I'm a guardian over my wife, over my children, over my maid, over my chauffeur, and is responsible for them. And even the servant is a guardian over the property of his master or his employer, 
and he is responsible for it. He should protect it. He should guard it. He should be honest in taking care of it. So all of you are guardians and all are responsible for their charges. Here, MashaAllah, I see online some have listed the three categories. Beautiful. Haswati from Malaysia. MashaAllah. That's nice. We'll check out all your answers and we'll comment on them after the break, inshallah. But now it is time to take a short break. Also, we'll get to explain this famous and beautiful hadith when we return back, inshallah, in a couple minutes. See you at the other end in a few. Stay tuned. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Ahmed from Nigeria is our first caller for this segment, and our phone numbers all should appear on the bottom of your screen. Feel free to dial any of the following numbers, please. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Ahmed, can you hear me? Ahmed. Please pick up the phone and talk, Ahmed. If you're busy, we can take another caller. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam alaikum. Number three. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, I have a question. I know you're calling because you have a question. What is your question, Ahmed? Bismillah. Now, so my question is about, for example, if someone has a piece of land and you build a school in it. And Too bad. To your connection is really to... bad, Ahmed. Your connection is really bad. I can barely hear you. No. Ahmed, please try again. Make sure you're sitting somewhere where we can talk, not driving. Uh, Hafiz from USA. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Raise your voice, Hafiz, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I hear you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How can yes. I help you, Hafiz? Yeah, I know. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, masjids, and um, I do. There's a masjid I go to in particular. I, I attend um, uh, programs that, and, and you know, I pray that I'll be there, you know, the nine yards and stuff. And um, the masjid there upon the Sunnah and stuff, but they follow the Deoband. And, you know, they're upon, but of course, a uh, lot Habibi, of Muslims nowadays are not perfectly upon said, the Sunnah. As you said, like, yeah, Hafiz, as you said, Alhamdulillah, the Masjid is on the Sunnah. And they pray according to the Sunnah. Bismillah, pray with them and may Allah accept your prayer. They offer Quranic classes for yourself, your wife and for the children. MashaAllah and attend. Other Islamic education, yeah, you can definitely acquire online. And then you choose the, your favorite sheikh, the scholars, or the institutes, or the colleges, or the academies, which you know for sure that they are following Ahlul Sunnah, where you and your family can learn online. But for the prayer and attend in the masjid and the Quran class, attend in the masjid. Barakallahu feek. Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you, Hafiz from the USA. Let me continue this beautiful hadith which leaves no one without charge, without responsibility. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I want you all to remember this hadith. It's a sound hadith and the narrator is Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. What did he say? What did he narrate from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Every one of you is definitely a guardian. A guardian, yani responsible. He's in a charge and he is responsible for his charges. 
he will be questioned and he will be asked. He will be recalled for those who are under his guardianship. The Amir, the president, the guardian, the governor, the mayor, the government, the minister, uh, the parliament members, the senates, all of them are in charge, but for bigger responsibility. You know what the Prophet said, whenever there is a person who is in charge for the affairs of the ummah, a governor, a king, a sultan, a president, at the time of death, at the time of, you know, leaving his responsibilities, if he was not taking care of his ummah and fulfilling his duties, discharging his responsibilities as it should be, and he was betraying his ummah, like making personal interest and benefit, um, making allies with the enemies hiddenly, uh, providing the enemies with valuable information about his society or country, choosing the not qualified people to be in a charge for his cabinet, ministers, uh, heads of states or governors or mayors, will never find the fragrance of paradise. إِلَّا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Heaven will be forbidden for him. This is a serious warning. Yeah. So be careful. Do not run for an office unless if you know for certain you're qualified and you have a plan. You have an agenda. You know what you're going to do. And you have a team that will help you. But if you're helpless, sit back. Assalamu alaikum. Yasmin from Germany. Welcome to Huda TV, Yasmin. Assalamu alaikum. The internet connection is a little bit bad with you. Can you hear me? I hear you clearly, mashallah. Huh. Okay. Um, I'm calling because of Palestine and I have got some thoughts and ideas how to help Palestine uh, without internet, um, aside from internet. And I ask your permission to share it. I ask your permission to share it. Bismillah, go ahead. We're all listening. Oh. Yeah, because uh, we are stuck in the moment and there is no movement. Um, I've been thinking internet uh, is off because there is shadow banning. And um, I thought about a different way. Um, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam announcing the truth. So I thought um, since internet is off that we can actually um, go into public places and use places um, where people gather, um, just a any kind of people. Uh, for, for different reasons like uh, cinema, sport events, stadium, theater, museums, or other events. And there you can just um, ask the owners, for example, and give a little bit of video presentation about Palestine. So, uh, because uh, there are still many people that have the one and only um, uh, information by the official media and they still don't know what about uh, Palestine. Okay. They still don't know because other uh, they were you have in mind, yes, informed me. in a different way. Huh? What are other suggestions you have in mind? You said what? you have many ideas. Many ideas? You said you have many ideas to help the Palestinian cause. I said I had... The uh, no, I said I have some thoughts and ideas, and the the idea is actually to go to different places and present um, okay. videos. An another idea, and please. For example, for example, interviews of the victims that are um, seeing the war, and uh, interviews, for example, um, clearing up the past. What happened with Israel uh, before? before the, the war, because no one knows uh, the history, what, what's going on. 
What did they experience the last 10 years under the occupation? Or what did they, uh, the grandparents experience when uh, the settlers came to Israel? So that you will show all of the view and explain what was actually going on and what is actually the truth. And maybe some, you can also have some report of people who uh, can witness the kindness and character of Palestines so that you can change the view of the people. The point of you. and sister Yasmin, thank you so much. Well, uh, the door is always open for suggestions and ideas, and all of us are devoted to help and assess the Palestinian cause and to help the weak and the oppressed anywhere on earth by all possible legal means, making dua, financial assistance physically if it is possible. There are uh, tens of thousands of doctors who are ready to march there right now and to start operating and help people uh, rebuild the entire uh, Gaza Strip by the grace of Allah. But we need first to put huge political pressure on every government in, in, in the West to agree to a ceasefire, an immediate ceasefire, and a complete withdrawal of the occupying forces to be in compliance with the United Nations resolutions, okay? They are occupying the Palestinian lands. This is as simple as that. And they're causing and they are insisting on completing their plan of genocide. There is no other explanation of what is happening right now but this. It's a clear genocide. Uh, 57 Muslim countries 57 Muslim countries, they should kick out every Israeli ambassador or representative of the occupation forces immediately. 57 Muslim countries, if they cut ties with the occupation forces and this regime and those who supply them with weapons, things will turn around in less than 12 hours, not 24 hours. Okay? And this is what we're talking about right now. Every Imam will be asked by Allah the Almighty about his responsibility, not about maintaining the seat, not about making certain that they have fat bank accounts in Switzerland and offshore and here and there. So what is happening in Palestine concerns every Muslim and number one concerns every Muslim ruler. We're talking about 50 seven Muslim countries. If there is an ambassador or a diplomat or an embassy representing the aggressors or the occupation forces in any of these 57 Muslim countries, they are responsible before Allah the Almighty and they are assisting the criminals and they are not fulfilling their duties towards Allah nor towards their people. And the second category is Every one of us now, you know, a lot of people when they're sitting and watching the news say, you know what, if I was the president and I've done this and this and that. And he cannot even manage his own home. His son doesn't pray. His daughter is not wearing hijab. His other son is in drugs. His wife is... Uh, so if he cannot manage his small kingdom, doesn't have full sovereignty over his house, so could you imagine that you can manage the affairs of a city or a town or let alone an ummah, a country. So take care of your responsibility first and manage them properly. And the catch in the hadith is how the Prophet ﷺ said, even the servant, like I'm a driver, I'm a chauffeur, driving a private car of my employer. Whenever he's sitting, when I step on the brake slowly so that he will not get disturbed, so that he would not fire me, when I drop his kids to school, I drop them very peacefully. I don't cross any lights. I don't uh, run any stop light, uh, sign. MashaAllah. But whenever I'm by myself in the car, I abuse the car. This person is not a trustworthy guardian. And Allah is the one who will ask him about his guardianship. I have copy machines and printing whatever uh, machines in my office, I use all of that to do my kids' homework and their assignments. 
Is it permissible? Of course not. But you know, it's cheap. Even if it is pennies, it is not yours. Why do you use it? You're abusing it. Something doesn't belong to you, and you are an amin, in a charge of looking after it, in a charge to protect it, to use it properly in whatever is useful for the work that you're doing, the work that you're getting paid for. Anything aside from that is lacking of amana, is betrayal. And uh, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of your rulers are those whom you love and they love you, whom you pray for and they pray for you. Likewise, when you have an employee whom you trust and you say, may Allah bless him, you give him even extra. He loves you, you love him, you take care of each other. That's a wonderful relationship. And on the other flip, and the worst of your rulers, the Prophet said, are those whom they hate you and you hate them. You distrust them and they trust, distrust you. And you curse them and they curse you. I mean, there is no connection. Unfortunately, this is the case with most of the rulers on earth. Because they haven't been chosen by their people. They were imposed on them or they came on top of a tank. So, they, you know, people, and they are not really working for the interest and the benefit of the people. So that's why how often you hear an ordinary person in his prayer say, Oh Allah, bless so and so, my employer my mayor, my governor, my sheriff, because he fulfilled our, uh, he fulfilled his duty towards us. He has taken care of us as people, he is ruling us. If this is the case, then the Prophet Sallallahu said, such person is the best of the rulers, the best of the ru'a, the best of those who are in charge. Who determines whether Allah will love you or not, whether you will be applauded by Allah, rewarded or not, the relationship between you and people. And it doesn't go only in one direction. It's mutual. You're good to them, they'll be good to you. It's natural. You're evil to them and you're oppressing them, they will hate you. They cannot oppress you, but they will supplicate against you. And the Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'ad ibn Jabal, وَاتَّقِي دَعْوَةَ الْمَظْلُومِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابِ Protect yourself and beware of the supplication of the oppressed and the one who's been wronged. If you ever oppress anyone or wrong anyone and they supplicate, the supplication would reach above the clouds and would go to the Almighty Allah directly. No barriers, no doors will be closed and Allah will vow to answer the supplication. That means you're destroyed, you're ruined. That's it, that is the end of you. That's why he said, Final caller for the day, Assalamu alaikum. Sister Aisha from Pakistan, welcome to Huda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, my question is about that, how to get authentic knowledge of Islam, for example, um, if I'm reading any hadith. Uh, as I am not a scholar, so how can I know that? Is this authentic or not? Because sometimes it really, um, you know, makes a confusion. Uh, Isha, so how to how know about you, it? Uh, Thank you very much. How old are you? Aisha, can you hear me? Yeah. How old are you? I am 20. You're 20, right? MashaAllah. Yeah. Okay. There is always more than one way to do anything. And when it comes to answering your question, there are two ways. One which is like people say, I will give you the answer. And then every time you have a similar question, you will have to call again. Like, and instead of giving you a fish, I will teach you fishing. If you at this age enroll in any of the authentic academies and attend the classes, or take even courses like in the science of hadith, in the science of tafsir, you will be acquainted of all of that and you will be able to detect and find out what is authentic and what is not authentic in one single course. And if you have the time, the leisure time that you can learn and study to obtain a VA, it's very, very beautiful and very useful. I highly recommend 
check out Mishka University in the USA, Houston, Texas, and Tampa, Florida. Check out their website, check out their courses, okay? There is Huda Academy, uh, there is the Online Islamic University, but I, took, uh, I put Mishka on top of the list, okay? 100% authentic, mashallah. There is KIU, Knowledge International University, out of Riyadh, very authentic as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all brothers and sisters, and may Allah teach us what we don't know, and guide us to what is best, and keep us rightly guided and steadfast on his straight path. May the Almighty Allah help and support our weak and oppressed brothers and sisters in Palestine. May Allah make them triumphant, and may Allah the Almighty defeat their enemies, their perpetrators, and punish them as they deserve so. And may Allah enable us to be a part of free in Palestine and helping and assisting our lovely brothers and sisters in Palestine. Ameen. Till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to Him. He born in humans to be the best. And give his best to religion to them So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price